Hello. In this video, we're going to go over verifying trig identities and trig functions. So these ones tend to give students a, a little bit of trouble. The first thing and first step is to change everything into cosines and sines. So we're going to take the first step and change our cosecant squared into one over sine squared of x, our secant squared over one cosine squared of x, all over, let's make sure that's a neat line, please, all over one over cosine of x. Remember, we're only going to manipulate one side of this equation for now. Sometimes we're going to have to manipulate the right side to get a little bit of an idea of where we need to go, but we should be moving forward. I think we have, I think we have the right idea. So when we have two separate fractions with two different denominators of trig functions, what we need to do is combine our functions, our fractions. What we need is a common denominator. So we can see here that the common denominator would be the multiplication of sine squared times cosine squared. Thus, we're going to multiply each fraction by what the other one is missing. We're going to multiply the fraction on the left that has the sine squared top and bottom by cosine squared of x. Then we're going to multiply 1 over cosine squared top and bottom by sine squared of x. Easy. So let's clean that up. We get cosine squared of x all over cosine squared of x sine squared of x plus 1, uh, sorry, sine squared of x all over cosine squared of x sine squared of x. Easy. Next, we can see that they have the same denominator. When two fractions have the same denominator, we can combine them. Thus, we continue. Cosine squared of x plus sine squared of x all over cosine squared of x times sine squared of x. And again, this is all over 1 over cosine of x. What we know and have to remember and memorize is this function of ide trig identities, the Pythagorean triple of sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to one. We see we have cosine squared plus sine squared. That is the same thing we have right there. So we can replace that with a one. So we clean up even further. One over cosine squared times sine squared, I should just put these in parentheses so it's not so weird looking, all over 1 over cosine of x. Now, when we have a fraction over something or a fraction over a fraction, we need to clean that up. We can't have multiple numerators and denominators. So what we do is we take our denominator and we multiply it by the reciprocal top to bottom. We do this because this will now cancel the bottom and becomes a multiplication. We can see when we're multiplying the top, well, let's just write it out. Cosine of x all over, we have cosine of x all over cosine squared of x, sine squared of x. And we can see that one of the cosines will cancel with one of these, leaving only one cosine of x left because there's two cosines being multiplied down here, cosine times cosine. One of them gets canceled, leaving a one on top and only one cosine left on bottom. And then finally, we have our answer. So let's get rid of this. Let's move this to here. Let's move this to here. Perfect. And we clean it up one last time, one over, and let's put our sine squared first, because if we look at our answer, that's what it looks like sine squared of x times cosine of x. And we have thus verified that this is a true statement. If there are other questions like this you would like me to do, please let me know. These can be quite, kind of tricky. Other than that, I hope everyone has a great day.